Hi everyone, welcome again. Our next speaker is Kamruna Harkia. She is a PhD student from Arizona State University. Her topic today is Directed Diffusion in Population Dynamics uh, with LA Effect. Kia, you can proceed. Thank you, Farzana, for your uh, nice introduction. Um, I'm doing my uh, PhD in Arizona State University, but the work I'm currently showing is my master's work uh, that I have been working until last year. Oh, I hope you all enjoy it. So um, I'll give you a slight outline of the things I'm going to show. Mostly uh, I'll focus on background information, how we came up with the model, and then I'll go with the model formulation and what we did to analyze the model. And if I have time, I'll show some numerical examples. Uh, first of all, our task was to uh, introduce reaction diffusion model in ecology, uh, but which is not new. Many people have been doing it for a long time. This is a very classic reaction diffusion model, which is a partial differential equation. And uh, it has two terms um, in the right side, which is uh, the green part, D delta U, which refers to the diffusion of the species and uh, the blue part, the function, which is the reaction part of the species. If the species U uh, is the like population density of the space at the time T. So this kind of model is like uh, really well known and uh, the idea of coming to this model is from heat equation. If you don't have this F function, it, this is basically a classic homogeneous heat, heat equation. So uh, the idea was same as the heat, like heat uh, diffuse from um, high temperature to low temperature. And uh, we uh, wanted to see how the population diffuse from like really high populated area to how they want to move. So there are a few different kinds of diffusion uh, going around in the research area. The first one is like the classical one that I already told. Um, it, this is kind of random work. Like if you are uh, in a space, uh, there is a lots of population and they have um, enough food and resource, but all the food and resources for some times it is limited. Uh, it is not unbounded. So if they arise some, there are some, problem or uh, any conflict, they might want to move to new place for better living or uh, some better uh, aspects. So for random diffusion or regular diffusion, they don't uh, really think before moving that which direction they should move. They just thought of going left, right, something like that. But there are other diffusion which are really directed like uh, in the population or in the um, ecology, we have uh, like uh, a bounce up to how much carrying capacity of that space has, how much food are there or how much population they can stay there. So uh, it, it, like the whole uh, environment is not symmetrical. So like one space has uh, much more distribution uh, resources than the other. So in these types of diffusion, uh, uh, the species wants to move toward the carrying capacity, like where they can get much better resource. And there is another carrying capacity, uh, there another um, diffusion going on, which is like not going to randomly, not going to the carrying capacity, which is maximum resource, but going to the uh, another resource distribution, which is like basically my need. Uh, I will go there if I have this, these kinds of needs. Suppose some uh, people are moving to cities for higher education, but some are moving the other cities because they have good job there. This kinds of situation, like even if uh, the like very big cities have a lot of opportunity, not everyone is moving there. So they just want to make sure that uh, the place they are moving meets their requirement of living. So uh, up to this, we have like uh, three different kinds of diffusion, but if we go to the last one, uh, if we choose P is equal to one, we go back to our regular diffusion and P is equal to K, which is our maximum uh, carrying capacity. So like, this is kind of a general model. 
And the second part comes is like uh, how to choose a reaction functions. And we have lots of uh, reaction functions, uh, mostly are like growth related. Um, the first one is like Malthus growth law, which is really famous and really old. And uh, we try to avoid it because it is exponential growth rate. Uh, it says that a uh, population either dies out or it grows exponentially and which is in reality not true but the second famous one was like from Verhulst's logistic growth model and this is like uh, the growth will uh, not, will increase or decrease depending on the like not only the growth uh, birth rate or death rate but also the uh, capacity of the environment like the carrying capacity comes here and there are some other kinds of uh, laws. They're like Gomper's law of mortality, um, which uh, basically, uh, if uh, we want to make sure that uh, the growth has, uh, the population has more, uh, we want to more focus on the mortality rate. We use these kinds of model and there are other like food growth law, Gilpin Island growth law. But for this uh, case, we are studying, we, thought of using the second one, which is logistic growth, which is really nice. And uh, it involved the carrying capacity. And as I said, uh, the term P for the resource distribution, it must be positive. And also um, it will be uh, at most equal to K, not uh, greater than K. And um, this, uh, this uh, last equation, this is not our final equation. This equation, I have been uh, not uh, like me and my supervisor were working on this model for a while. And um, this is like really uh, well analyzed and not um, today's topic to discuss. But if anyone wants to know how to analyze this model, they can um, see the reference I have shown in the last page and uh, see how to analyze this model. But today we, are, we want to include the LA effect on the model. And I want to see, uh, say first how LA effect comes in the model and what actually LA effect is. Um, when we are talking about the density of the population in the environment, uh, there are few species which are really like, um, really struggling not only because of the resource limitation but their density is so low that if uh, they don't have enough mate to reproduction or like they're uh, if they lay eggs on the water the eggs are so small or so tiny that uh, they dies out bef before they can like uh, uh, make a uh, uh, like they can leave okay so these kinds of effect like uh, those are not because of birth and uh, death or not because of the environment, but because of their low density. Uh, here comes the LA effect and um, WCLA was the first person who introduced this effect in ecology. And there are some bookish definition of how LA effect can come like pollen limitation in case of flowers. If they don't have enough pollen, uh, then uh, the flower growth will be like really low and it can extinct in a such a short time. Some same, um, same pattern like sperm limitation for animals and uh, birds and fishes like that. So we say that in simply LA effects appears when we have really small group size and group size is really important in uh, population so they can exist in the environment. There are some pictures of the animals and like insects or any kinds of plants they are having currently a effect and going uh, extinction really soon. And uh, most of them we, we already know, this is the uh, beetles. We rarely see them now. And the second picture is like tigers. This is very common animal in Bangladesh. It was but right now we uh, were told that it is going really uh, fast extinction. And uh, we wanted to add the LA effect in our model. When we mean that we want to add LA effect in our model, we are basically adding that in our reaction function. And uh, 
adding another term in the reaction function. But if you see this if, the first term R u uh, times one minus u over k is our common logistic growth rate. And we just added another term u over m minus one. And there are some other ways to do that too. People are doing it like uh, instead of multiplying it, they subtract it from the uh, uh, reaction function and some does like um, add, each, add, add it, but you know, like all of these patterns comes like uh, uh, at, at the end, like same conclusion. But we use this multiplication process where our uh, uh, term M is the sparse distribution function. This makes the population uh, density really low uh, or uh, their growth rate becomes really negative or close to zero because of this M. And uh, if, you, uh, if we see this, um, like mathematically LA effect has like a definition. We say that uh, if the function, uh, function f is uh, negative when u is small, although based, although like in reality, the growth rate doesn't go negative, but um, it's like kind of uh, like, uh, you, like we say negative temperature, which is actually not negative, but it's below something that, um, it, the concept is similar to that. So we said that um, f is uh, like the function, the reaction function goes negative when u is like really small. And then if that happens, that means like unconditional extinction. My, I mean, there is no way that we can save the species. And similarly, like if uh, f is like still decreasing, but not going to the negative side uh, with this low density of u, then we we say that it is a weak ally effect and um, the species is surviving, but very like hardly, like this situation is called extinction survival situation. So finally, um, I will come back to later. I'll just show, show you the model first. Finally, with the all uh, kinds of assumption we did, we come up with this model, uh, reaction diffusion model, the first term D delta U is the reaction, uh, sorry, diffusion term with D is the diffusion coefficient. Like what is the rate of their diffusing from the one place to another? And this term is our uh, reaction function. Um, R is the intrinsic growth rate. U is the density of the population. K is the carrying capacity of the environment. And M is the uh, sparse distribution that I mentioned before. And here you know, we notice that I just use the regular diffusion, which was P is equal to one initially, uh, because the population is already in a really extinction situation because of the L effect. And if the, the population goes out of the, like goes to the another city or another um, uh, environment, then uh, the species like extinct really fast. And we also consider Neumann boundary condition uh, because we wanted our domain to be uh, you know, constant. I mean, if we have a hundred population, we want to want them to remain hundred. If few people, few people or few species goes out of the uh, domain, then exact number of people will be coming inside. So uh, that is our like closed domain. And I also want to mention, I skipped that part before. So this is like um, this function if uh, we uh, numerically show the negative situation or like unconditional extinction or, survival, uh, or extinction survival, survival situation for some uh, parameter value of K and M. And uh, we see that um, if, M is like really close to zero, or if M doesn't have any effect on the uh, species, then the uh, then the function or the reaction function acts like a logistic function, which is our previous one. Um, and the graph is uh, this first graph. And the second is our weak LA effect, 
where like you uh, the density is like really low the function um is um like the aim is positive so it's still like it is surviving a little bit but not like a really good way like the first curve it it's like really increasing and going uh, up and then going down but not going below the um curve but for b it is uh, initially they are uh, they are in the below like the uh, if is like really negative and then they try to uh, survive and increase a little bit and for the third case when we choose the sparse function exactly negative and uh, that's and that time in the domain like we all, i chose like domain from 0 to 1 for all cases and this is like happens that it never goes to positive values on that domain from zero to one. And for this, we choose the uh, carrying capacity is uh, two, point, 2 plus cosine pi x. This cosine pi x comes from the model. I mean, uh, we want to make sure that um, like, you know, if we go to the model and in somehow carrying capacity will be the exact solution um, uh, if uh, you choose k is e u is equal to k and it will give you both side uh, zero. So carrying capacity could be the exact solution. So when you choose the carrying capacity, we must uh, ensure that this boundary conditions hold. So we have, uh, we choose like, uh, Sorry, okay, where is that? Okay, so we chose uh, cosine pi x on the domain zero to one to make sure the first derivative goes to zero. And uh, when we started analyzing this model, we first wanted to know if what happens uh, if there is no diffusion first. And if we see if D is close to zero, I mean, if uh, there is no diffusion term, then this is basically a normal OD model, which is this. So uh, we analyze this, but uh, I'm not showing this works here because um, uh, uh, the work was really huge. But if anyone is, is interested, this paper was published so they can look at the paper. I'll just say uh, for now that um, if the diffusion is not, present and we only have LA effect in the environment. Uh, obviously, uh, growth rate is uh, positive and the sparse function will be uh, from 0 to K. And then we'll see that um, this uh, population will decrease if uh, the density is between 0 to M and uh, increase uh, or uh, the population is above uh, the carrying capacity, but uh, increase if it is between uh, the sparse function and uh, the carrying capacity. So if it is between sparse function and carrying capacity, only then they can uh, exist in the environment. And uh, we want to finally uh, show our like analysis of the uh, PD model we uh, came up with. And uh, for that, first of all, we needed an equilibrium point. And uh, for PD, finding an equilibrium point was really hard. So we just assume that um, UTX has an equilibrium point, and, which is like U star. So when we have an equilibrium point, U star, which does not depend on T, but only depends on, on X. I mean, uh, the time has nothing to do with uh, the equilibrium point, but space does. So in that case, we have DU over DT is zero. And we this is a parabolic, uh, sorry, this is a, yeah, sorry. This is a parabolic FPD. So when that happens, we we input the, uh, input the, uh, uh, equilibrium point, it becomes the um, uh, elliptic PD, and then we can analyze the uh, behavior of the dynamics and how it will uh, behave in real life or um, numerically. So we came up with that when diffusion are not zero, we have the PD, that diffusion coefficient becomes a bifurcation point. And finding the bifurcation point was like uh, really not easy, but we somehow uh, did a lot of analysis to get that. And we see that uh, it is actually like, uh, if we use the 
eigenvalue eigenvector method for PD. And uh, if we find the largest eigenvalue, which is which will be the um, reciprocal of the diffusion coefficient, and we can uh, in that sense we can find the exact formula for the bifurcation value of the system. And uh, later we um, numerically also found some value for the bifurcation value. And um, we show that this value, like if um, we have a bifurcation value and we need the diffusion coefficient less than that bifurcation value so that the solution co could exist on the domain. Otherwise, it will not exist. The uh, population will die out soon. And this is the formula for the diffusion value we, we found with the using the equilibrium point U and uh, uh, also like integrating this equation one time and using the Neumann boundary condition, uh, which is um, like the if I put out all the work here, it will be like really huge slide. So I gave that off. But if you want to, in, if you are really interested in knowing how to do the analysis, you can ask me later on or you can uh, read the paper. This is the two important findings we have found. Uh, first one is uh, regarding the bifurcation value. Uh, sigma one was the reciprocal of the diffusion coefficient. So we found out that uh, in the model, there will be some uh, growth rate, I mean, R1, which will be the maximum growth rate of the uh, growth function given. And similarly, K1, which will be the maximum uh, carrying capacity of the environment. And M1 will be the maximum sparse could the uh, density could be. So if we have this uh, maximum values of R, K, and M, uh, then uh, we found out this formula that if our um, sigma one, which is the largest eigenvalues, if it is greater or at least equal to this, form, uh, this formula, R1 times K1 minus M1 squared over four K1 M1, then the uh, system we have, there will be no positive solution. And uh, I was already told uh, that this is uh, kind of related to bifurcation. So if this happens, there will be no positive solution. That means there will be uh, no spaces left out in the environment uh, to survive. And we also found out that um, there are some other, like, uh, some other values, uh, probably not the maximum, uh, but uh, close to maximum of uh, M, like M0, and R1 will be same R1 as the before, and K0 um, is not K1, uh, so it will not be maximum, but there will be some position of the environment where we can uh, show that there will be a bounded region where the solution can exist, not above the region, not below the region, only this uh, region um, we will have solution. And uh, we all also showed numerically that this uh, boundary is uh, valid. So this is the first uh, example I'm showing. And, um, this is uh, basically I wanted to show how the uh, bifurcation value was working and uh, this uh, first theorem that we don't have solution and it goes extinction uh, for sigma one is greater than to these values. So if we take um, some uh, like positive carrying capacity and uh, this function came up with the same concept as I uh, told before, uh, because of the domain is zero to one and carrying capacity could be solution. So we had to make sure it is positive and also the second derivative is zero. And with the similar concept, we choose a positive um, sparse distribution because we wanted to, uh, to show the weak LA effect. And uh, for simplicity, we choose that the growth rate is just one. And we choose a initial density 0.1 uh, in between zero to one. And for, we wanted to see if uh, D has, how D, how D will affect, like the diffusion coefficient will affect the system. And uh, we choose several D to see if solution exists or not. And if we see that, um, 
uh, when these like there is no uh, diffusion, it's just like the this green line is not that. Uh, uh, I already showed that uh, when there is no diffusion, the system acts like an ordinary differential equation. So uh, there will be a solution which is uh, really converging to a fixed point really quickly. But for uh, when we uh, increase the d value parameter a little bit, um, it does not converge really quickly, but slowly to another um, another point of the or another equilibrium point similarly for um like uh the most two important phenomena was like this blue curve and the red curve if we see the value of the blue curve it is like we choose d is equal to 0.153 and we see that it is going up and it will converge if i increase the t and uh it will converge to half of the carrying capacity not the carrying capacity but half of the carrying capacity uh why is that i'll show it in the next figure and but when you just increase like 0 0.001 value the solution does not converge to the uh, carrying capacity or half of the carrying capacity anymore it directly goes down to zero um, that is when we uh, realized that um, we have a D um, uh, numerically for this kind of problem, for these values of K, M, R, and the initial condition. And uh, that value will be 0. Um, 0.153. And if we have the values 0. 0.153 and below up to zero, we'll have uh, uh, like a species which will survive in the I uh, in the environment, but uh, it go if it goes above that value, it will go uh, directly extinction. If we increase another one, it will go faster, like really fast. We can see that it goes like uh, extinction in um, like fifteen or uh, ten, uh, yeah, fifteen. I think in at the time fifteen, where like even we choose like point one five three, the blue curve is still like uh converging to the half of the carrying capacity but at the time 45 that was one um uh, scenario we found and the other scenario was for the second theorem we, we established that we'll have a boundary of where the solution will exist and um we did a numerical simulation on that and we also have a full proof on how we got this boundary and how we got the fixed parameter uh, cannot, uh, I'm not an R1, um, but I haven't included the proof here. So, but I'll just show you the numerical approximation we got uh, about that. So at this time we fix the diffusion since uh, we want them to exist. Um, and uh, we choose the diffusion um, on to, uh, in this, domain like from 0 to 0 0.15 so in this domain so it sure exists so we choose diffusion 0 0.05 and uh, 0.1 and 0.153 so for the first case we choose diffusion 0 0.05 and we know solution will exist and um, we wanted to see if the solution uh, re uh, relies uh, or in re resides in the, on, the, on the boundary we expected to have so if we see our um, boundary again, it's just k not mu is square over two, uh, comma k not over two, where mu is from zero to one. That means if we choose the lowest value, that will be zero, and the highest value will be k not over two, which will be the half of the carrying capacity, more or less. So this is our uh, this is we what we um, for the same. Uh, uh, time, uh, same interval of the domain zero to one, and uh, we make sure that it both uh, diffusion, like both three kinds of diffusion, have the same boundary. Uh, so we can uh, really view if the the solution are really in the boundary or not. So we see that um, for the first case where diffusion was 0 0.05, the solution does exist from zero to one point three. One point three is actually like uh, uh, like k over two, I mean, half of the carrying capacity, the solution does not uh, go outside of the boundary. After time 15 to 16, it is like converging to a equilibrium point. For the second case, 
uh, when we have a diffusion point one, um, we um, it takes a little bit more time to converge to equilibrium point, but still like it, it is converging uh, below our half of the carrying capacity and above the zero. So it is still not going uh, outside of the boundary. And the last case uh, where we also checked uh, what will happen if uh, there is no, dif uh, the bif diffusion is like close to the bifurcation value. And we already know that it will go to the extension, I mean zero, and uh, zero is our lower boundary of the uh, existence of solution. And we see that, uh, okay, actually we have all kinds of situation, but uh, it really depends on the bifurcation value if we, uh, uh, or the diffusion value, if it is like um, not on that domain, uh, it will not uh, work for the ex existence of the solution. And uh, no matter what the diffusion value is, it will always be in this domain from zero to K over two, which where K is the carrying capacity. And the K value, M value and R value, uh, which is the same for uh, showing the difference of diffusions and the difference of uh, different diffusion rate and uh, how the solution is existing in the domain. Okay, I think I am uh, already done. Uh, I will just uh, conclude of what we did in this uh, paper. Uh, first of all, uh, we, we constructed the model with LA effect, and this is this is what we did actually new because without LA effect, we have done this uh, work. Uh, uh, several times. Uh, LA effect, uh, adding the LA effect was more challenging, uh, both in analysis and also in numerical approximation, um, uh, mostly because there was not enough resources on the like previous uh, papers or journals. Uh, we could not find much more to have enough background, but uh, there are few like a few theoretical uh, uh, theoretical paper about LA effect, but not much uh, are available in uh, in mathematical uh, concept. Uh, so that was really uh, interesting at that time to work on this paper. And uh, our model was generalized. Uh, it will work on any kinds of species, but not for uh, humans, except for humans, any birds, fishes, or um, uh, or gazing animals, any kinds of uh, species will work on that uh, model. And we also discussed the bifurcation, which is the key point of the model. And uh, we numerically interpreted our findings. And uh, uh, in future, uh, since I am currently doing my PhD in ASU and my dissertation will be different uh, than my master's project. Uh, so I'm currently not uh, working on this anymore, but uh, we hope to do some data analysis that, that we could not do in uh, when I was a master's student. Uh, getting the data is really hard in Bangladesh. So we were hoping that in future, uh, if we get um, enough data of uh, any kinds of species that are going extinction because of the early effect, uh, we want to match that data with our numerical approximation or our theoretical results. And there will be other kinds of things we can do is choosing uh, our distribution function not one. So that means we can um, do the diffusion directly to another distribution function. So that's all. And these are the reference I used. And um, this second one is the really good book. And that helped me a lot throughout whole of my masters. And I literally read that book as a, like, this is the thing I need mostly about how to analyze PD in reaction diffusion model and which kind of method I can use, how to code and everything. I think if anyone wants to do um, reaction diffusion model and if they read this book, it will be like great help. And I'm done. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Kia, for the talk.